in Kenya, where President Bola Tinubu has joined other AU leaders and heads of regional economic community at the fifth media coordination meeting of the AU. The president arrived in Nairobi on Saturday to participate in this meeting, where he will present a report on the status of regional integration in economic, in the ECOWAS rather, highlight actions carried out during the period under review by ECOWAS institutions, member states, the private sector, and other stakeholders to deepen integration through trade, free movement of persons, investment promotion, infrastructure development, peace, security, and stability. This fifth media coordination meeting, which is convened under the AU's theme for 2023, is tagged Acceleration of African Continental Free Trade Area Implementation, and it is made up of the Bureau of the AU Assembly, comprising the heads of state and governments uh, from Comoros, Botswana, Burundi, and Senegal, as well as the leaders of the eight regional economic communities. In an earlier event on Saturday delivered on behalf of President Tinubu the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the President called on African leaders to respect democracy, rule of law, and ensure political stability. This high-level UNDP-AU side event in partnership with Chatham House will present a report on military coups and the need for democratic renewal in Africa. But it is a beautiful coincidence for the African Union as President Bola Tinubu's inaugural speech as ECOWAS chairman resonates strongly on the continent of Africa. The regional program coordinator for Africa in the UNDP also agrees that President Tinubu's leadership of ECOWAS may spur the much needed democratic renewal on the continent. There's really a clear coincidence between uh, what uh, the president of Nigeria, uh, President Ahmed Bola Tinubu, mentioned in his speech on the 9th of July and the content uh, of uh, our report. Uh, a coincidence because he did emphasize the zero tolerance of uh, military coups. And I, I think this is what we should continue to invest in. But for us to ensure that we experience long-term uh, stability and democracy on the African continent, there's a need to revisit how democracy serve the people. In some parts of Africa, military coup d'etat seems to be fashionable, especially when citizens yearn for inclusion, shared prosperity and change. West Africa alone has witnessed six successful military coups think, uh, since 2020 and three unsuccessful attempts. This military interregnum now makes West Africa and the Sahel the coup belt of the continent. Over the last few years, our continent has experienced a sharp increase in the number of unconstitutional changes of government in Africa, which is a major setback in our efforts to advance democratization, stability and sustainable development. The Gambia has learned a lot from military coups, which significantly retarded the political trajectory of my country. Our collective explorations of the challenges to the sustenance of good governance is a way only to honor the memory of the victims subjected to the evils of despotism, but also to fulfill our responsibilities to protect and uphold fundamental human rights. The Permanent Secretary in Nigeria's Ministry of Foreign Affairs represented President Bola Tinubu at this high-level event to launch the report on soldiers and citizens. He reiterated President Bola Tinubu's desire to rid the continent of military coups and strengthen democracy. This ugly trend has only succeeded in threatening the peace, security and stability of the sub-region and by extension the African continent living in its trail, poverty, internally displaced persons, and humanitarian crisis. In the same vein, this ugly trend has also led to food shortages and escalated health challenges. The report, however, made some recommendations, which includes strengthening continental and regional response mechanism to military coups and build long-term resilience by addressing structural and institutional drivers of coups. The advocacy is for countries in Africa to embrace inclusive, representative and participatory governance because so far, economic sanctions, political isolation and uh, condemnations of military takeovers has not stopped the trend. Femi Akonde, TVC News, Nairobi, Kenya.
Back here in Nigeria, 80,000 internally displaced victims of Mango Plateau State ac attack across uh, 52 villages and now taking refuge across 11 emergency temporary IDP camps in the council area are in need of food items to survive at the moment. TVC News Phnom Joshua reports. The declaration of a state of emergency on food security by President Bola Tinubu coincides with the present condition of over 80,000 displaced locals across the Mangu local government area of the state. The pilot primary school in Mangu town has now been turned into a camp for displaced victims. We visit and at about 12 in the afternoon, the displaced victims have not eaten breakfast. <laughs> Uh, for almost two days now, uh, the feeding in this camp has been a challenge for us because we run short of food stuff, we run short of uh, finances to buy things for their cooking. So we've been managing. Um, even as of today, they have not gotten something tangibly to eat. We face difficulties uh, for some lack of a uh, lack of a uh, food. Some of the children. Even you cannot get enough food to eat because of the condition we found ourselves. Help has come from this non-governmental organization to two IDP camps in Bokos and Mangu council areas following the malicious invasion of the communities. The support is not enough, but the joy the IDPs exhibit upon receiving the items is touching as a sing in appreciation. We are here to show them love with food items, uh, with relief materials, clothes, shoes, mattresses, blankets, um, consumables, uh, just name it. This is the least we could do as an NGO. Some of them lost their breadwinners and sources of livelihood and are left alone to cater for their children. The trauma these IDPs have gone through possess another challenge in the camp as narrated by the camp coordinator. Uh, so many of them are traumatized, seriously traumatized. Some of them, you see them walking and talking alone because they have no hope of going back. Because even if they are asked to go back now, where will they even go and stay? Feeding is said to be the major challenge bedeviling these internally displaced persons across 11 camps here in Mangu local government area of Plato State. Well-to-do Nigerians as well as the international community are called upon to intervene by way of providing food or other items to better men their present state at the moment. Phnom Joshua, TVC News, Mangu. 26 communities in Kano State are on the verge of being cut off as floods have washed away major link roads in Tiga Town. TVC News Kano correspondent Ibrahim Isa reports that this has affected economic activities negatively in the area. It's a beautiful morning in Tiga town. Adam Alarama rides on his bicycle to the farm every day. But his journey always becomes tedious at this spot where the road has been washed away by flood. Sincerely, we are in predicament. Even if you are on foot, it is not easy, let alone coming here with the load. Now we want the government to come to our rescue. This is the major road linking Tiga town and more than 26 other communities within an outside Kano state. Tiga has one of the biggest dams in the state and water stored by the dam also contributed to the collapse of the bridge. As water continues to escape its embankment due to heavy rays, the road is further degraded by erosion. This untied road is the only option for people of Tiga and its environs. They say plying this road is now becoming troublesome. They call on the government to wade in and provide lasting solution to the problem. That place you are seeing is where a truck fell off with bags of rice because there was no good road. Commercial activities have seriously been affected because there is no road. The absence of a smooth road network puts vehicle owners in jeopardy as many strive to ply the high side of the diversion. The situation is grim, 
and prompts the visit of Abdurrahman Kau, the senator representing Kano South, on behalf of the members of the House of Representatives, Abdul Mumin Jibrin and Kabir Rum. Senator Kawi expresses concern and assures that the road will be fixed in earnest. Definitely, if we allow the situation to continue as it is today, it will cause a serious uh, problem uh, which will lead to the loss of life and property. From here, Kano State, Jigawa, and of course, even some part of Yodi and Boche State. A resident of Tiga and its environs, especially farmers who are worst hit by the situation, are optimistic that the authorities, who are now aware of this disaster waiting to happen, will weigh in and provide a lasting solution. Ibrahim Isa, TVC News, Kanu. Imo State Governor Hope Uzodima has approved the payment of 40,000 Naira minimum wage to the state's workforce in the bid to cushion the effects of the fuel subsidy removal by the federal government. Meeting with stakeholders in Oweri, the Imo State capital, Governor Uzodima uh, said his government is determined to ameliorate the sufferings of the citizens. Prince Uba reports. Gathered in this hall are prominent Imo citizens who came from the 27 local government areas of the state. It is an opportunity for the governor to reel out the achievements of his shared prosperity government and also announce the increment of workers' salaries to mitigate the effects of fair subsidy removal. There shall be an immediate upward review of salaries and wages of workers in the state. The minimum wage is hereby raised to 40,000 naira. It is discretionary consequential adjustments of other levels. Continue to impress workers in your timetable. There are other people, the other time we had a meeting with you, there are matters we presented concerning some other workers. Yes, yes. There are workers, you said, that their sins have been forgiven. So please, we want you to consider those ones. Aside the increment in workers' salaries, some other measures were made public, especially as it affects farmers traders and ordinary citizens. The issue of IPOP sit at home order and insecurity generally also dominated discourse at the stakeholders' meeting. By refusing to release the Namde camp, by refusing to repatriate um, Simon, by refusing to caution uh, Asari Dokopo, Your Excellency, we feel that this is a conspiration of silence. And federal government must clear the names. You have listed out very nice guidelines of how we be better. As the Lordship said, we need more input from you on the side of security so that as you implement that. Those that trodden who will be benefiting from it will not get their heads chopped off. Hopefully, in no distant time, the state government will match ways with actions and commence implementation of its promises made to Imo citizens. Prince Oba, TVC News, Oweri. The Lagos state government has honored 753 civil servants with the Long Service Award in the 16th edition of the award. Representing the state government, Mr. Morio Kuala charged public servants in the state to key into the, its digitalization of the civil service for effective performance. He said the Long Service Merit Awards is an opportunity for the state government to celebrate public servants who have served the government and people of Lagos diligently for 30 years or more. I wish us to seize this opportunity to reiterate the commitment, its continued commitment and loyalty of Lagos State public servants in implementing the state's public policies and programs, especially as it relates to the Things Plus agenda of leaving no man behind for the betterment of our dead state. To my knowledge, I don't know of any other state that does this for its public servants. 
but for Lagos State to count us worthy of recognition on a yearly basis. It is a thing of joy, it is a thing that needs to be celebrated, and it's a thing to thank the governor, Mr. Babajide Olusu Olasa Olufo.